Andrew Dixon here with Brett Pinnings from Bowl Cut Studios. And, or studio. Studio or studio? Studios, you got it. You had okay. it right the first okay. time. There's more than one. More than... I'm just kidding. There really isn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your new game is called Mage Quit. Mage Quit, yep. Yeah. So it's a top-down wizard brawler for up to 10 players. Um, you, uh, you basically duke it out on an arena. Um, first wizard to have the longest beard at the end of nine rounds wins. And uh, before every single round, you, you draft a new spell. And, and as... Most people probably know this, but when you kill other yeah. wizards, your beard grows. Your beard grows, exactly. I mean, that's general nerd cultural knowledge, yeah. but... Uh, <laughs> now, uh, so, what do you hope players get out of their experience playing the game? Obviously, it's chaotic, it's frantic, it's, yep. it's pretty strategic, though, too, right? It is also strategic, yeah. So, the way, the way we designed the game was um, kind of around anticipation. So, sort of prediction, and then the, the reward, like, the, the like, emotion that's rewarded for that is anticipation. So, yeah. Um, since it's a little bit like slower pace, you have to sort of like predict where your opponent's gonna be when you catch a spell. And then you can also apply a curve to it, like a secret curve. Yeah. Did you guys notice that when you yeah, played? Okay. I was terrible at it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an acquired skill for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can apply a curve, so there's some information hiding there. So basically, like if you can sort of predict where your opponent's gonna be, and then they don't predict where you're throwing your spell, you hit them, and you get sort of a feedback reward that right, way. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Is this your first game? This is our first released game, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool, and how long have you been working on this? Uh, we've been working on it for three years, but um, both of us have been part-time on it the whole time. It's yeah. been like just a passion project, side project thing, but um, I'm gonna be going full-time on it in February, so in a few weeks, couple weeks. Okay, cool, and uh, do you have a like goal of when, I mean, it's not early access now, right? It's early access now on Steam, yes, but we're also um, gonna be bringing it to the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One. Cool. Um, and we're, Aiming for Q3, but I think that's aggressive. So okay. we'll, we'll cool. Yeah, yeah. Pending. Well, yeah, Release cool. date pending. Great. And uh, if you had to narrow it down to one thing, what do you players get out of the experience of playing it? Okay, yeah, that was the yeah. question you asked yeah. earlier. Um, I would say... Sort of, okay, it, it's, it's the kind of game you would play with a group of friends, um, and it, you'd either you'd either piss them off or you guys would like to have a good time but yeah. it's kind of just like a, it's that type of game it's like it's like smash bros but um less button mashy and more uh more like noob friendly i guess like yeah, new players right. can kind of get into it more yeah. so what you'd get out of it is i guess the same thing you'd get out of any kind of brawler which is just kind of like a rush of of competitive yeah. play i don't yeah. know yeah well and as you play through though the your abilities you kind of yeah. stack they do yeah. stack, yeah. And, then, and and there's we we have kind of like a negative feedback thing going on. So if you're if you're doing well towards the beginning, um, the way that the spell drafting works is the person who's losing actually picks their spell first yeah, for the next right. round. So that way it sort of it tries to balance people out, and that way new players get to choose the same spells yeah. each time. So that they they like once you, they get the hang of one set of spells, then they actually get good at playing that one set of spells. But then that means they're also doing better, so that they yeah. can't always pick those spells, and it forces them. It, it adds a lot of replayability because it forces right. them down different trees. Yeah, yeah, I like that about it. Um, and then another kind of last question I like to ask game designers is why do you make games that drives you to do this? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I like seeing, um, I don't know, I, I think that games are the most powerful form of media that exists because it, it adds interactivity. It's basically a movie with interactivity, right? There's, yeah. no, there's no fourth wall. So you have you have access to um, a spectrum of emotions that you wouldn't other wouldn't otherwise have access to if you were just making a film, yeah. um, like like camaraderie, uh, rivalry, uh, basically like guilt or mastery or uh, weakness. All of those things you can't really get from film, but you can get from making games. Yeah. And I just I like seeing people enjoy a thing that I that I that I made, and I think video games are yeah. the, the most. Extreme way to do that, I guess. Yeah. Is why I do it. Yeah, it's great. Well, uh, I, we played it. It was great. I was terrible at it, but I was just terrible enough at it that I really want to play again <laughs> and do better. So uh, sometimes games are a blast when you're bad at them if you know you could do better. And I think you succeeded at that, so okay, I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. I think also, I think also as long as. Um, as long as you know exactly why you did poorly. Right. Some exactly. games, if you just die, it's uh, it's not enjoyable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Well, this is great. Thanks so much, Brett. Yeah. Of course. Good time. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah.